Good morning folks, uh, welcome to today's tutorial where we'll be putting all our work of factorising quadratic trinomials and other quadratic expressions um, into doing some simplifying of algebraic expressions. So wrapping it all up into one where we get some, some fairly challenging questions. Okay, so this question says simplify this algebraic expression x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over x squared minus 4. Okay, so we're going to get several marks for this type of question, probably maybe a two or three mark question. First of all, factorise what you can, that is number one. As soon as I look at this, I know the top part is a quadratic trinomial and I can factorise that. Hopefully we can do that in our head. If not, you can use your PNS method. If we want to do our PNS method, just I'll, I'll do it for the first one. One times two is two. The middle number is three. Two times one and is two, and two plus one is three. But hopefully you could do that without doing the PNS method. We should be getting to that stage about now. X plus two, x plus one on top. So we factorise the top part. Bottom part, there's no common factors, it's not a quadratic trinomial, but hopefully you'll recognise it being a difference of two squared numbers. We can square root x squared, that becomes x. We can square root the 4, that makes 2. And hopefully you remember that the difference of two squares is the exact same term, but instead of having a plus 2, or sorry, a minus 2, we've got a plus 2. Okay, so that's the first part where you get your marks from, you might be getting one or two marks uh, depending on, on the marking scheme for those two parts, so factorising the top, factorising the bottom. Now it's a simple matter of recognising that we have an x plus 2 on top and an x plus 2 on the bottom. Remember, things like 2 divided by 2 equals 1, 5 divided by 5 equals 1, so x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 equals 1, they cancel each other out. So all we're left with now is simply x plus 1 on top and x minus 2 on bottom. You can put brackets around if you want, but you don't need them. Nice and easy. Okay, question 2. This gets a bit more challenging. We'll be doing the same sort of aspect of that, but we'll be putting more than one question in, into it. Because once we've actually simplified the left-hand side, we need to simplify the right-hand side, and then we need to deal with the times. So let's have a look. Hopefully, I mean, again, you can use the PNS method, guys, if it helps you. Hopefully, because I've given you easier type of questions, they're all x squared, so it should be a little bit easier. So x squared plus 5x minus 6, so we're looking for two numbers at times together to give minus 6, but add together to give 5. 6 and 1 make 6, 6 minus 1 makes 5, so 6 minus 1 are our two numbers. Okay, there are my two numbers for the top one. So we've got x plus 6 brackets x minus 1, that's my first section. Okay, so we're time, two numbers times together to give the 2, add together to give 3, well 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 makes 3, so we've got that one there, x plus 2 and x plus 1. Again guys, if you want to use PNS method, absolutely go for it, we're simply factorising each expression. The next one we have a difference of two squared numbers, square root of x squared is x, square root of 1 is simply 1. So for x minus 1, we have x plus 1. If you've got two terms, guys, it's the first thing you should always look for, difference of two squares. It's very easy to tell. The next one, we have x squared plus 10x plus 24. Slightly more challenging. You may well need to do a bit of trial and error for this one because 24 has lots of different factors. Um, 24 and 1 doesn't work. 12 and 2 could work, but only 12 minus 2 makes 10, but a positive 24, so that doesn't work. Um, 3 and 8 won't work, 6 and 4 will work. So x plus 6 and x plus 4, because 6 4s are 24, and 6x six plus 4x is 10x. Okay, so you're getting quite a few marks there. You might get one mark for the left-hand side, one mark for the right-hand side, depending on the marking scheme. Like the last question, we now need to simplify. Now, this times, remember, times just means that we can just chuck them all together. Now, if we wanted to, you know, you don't have to do this, but you could actually rewrite it and have x plus 6, because that means x plus 6 times x minus 1, times x minus 1, times x plus 1, all over x plus 2, times x plus 1, times x plus 6, times x plus 4. You don't need to do that line, guys. Like, I'm just explaining to you that that's what it means. But like the last question, whatever is on top and bottom, we know if we divide it by itself, it becomes 1, so in theory it cancels itself out. 
So x plus 1, x plus 1 cancels. We've got uh, x plus 6 and x plus 6. Um, and that looks to be about it. So we've got x minus 1. And we've got two of them, so we can actually even just do the squared over x plus 2. And we've got an x plus 4 left over. Okay, and we can leave it as that. All right. I know, look, guys, this is a little bit tough, but I'm going through it quite fast. But all you have to realize, to get marks, you simply need to factorize the top part and the bottom part, top part and bottom part. And then it's just like multiplying fractions. Remember, if it was a divided by fraction, we'd simply turn it to a times, and then you would simply invert the second fraction. Okay, so I'm not going to do a divide by. I'm going to do the harder one. Now, this is a bit more challenging. Again, you can get easy marks for simply factorizing. We know how to factorize. We've got a nice easy one on the bottom. Um, two numbers at times you leave one. Well, that can only be one and one, and they both add to give two. So it's actually a perfect square. X plus one, X plus one, plus two all over. Um, okay, so you need a product of four and a sum of five. So four times one is four, four plus one is five. So it's X plus four and x plus 1. Again, if you struggle to do that in your head like I've just, just done there, do your PNS method. Okay, if I do the PNS method for the second one, you know, again, it'd be just be writing them out 4 and 5, and so it'd be 4 and 1. Okay, uh, again, you might have a longer one where you have to split the terms. I've just given you relatively shorter ones. Okay, how do you add or subtract fractions? Well, the only way you can add and subtract fractions is if the, de the denominator is the same. Now, unfortunately, the denominators are not the same. So let's see what's common and what we basically need. All right, so we've got an x plus 1 and an x plus 1. Here we've got an x plus 4 and an x plus 1. So we've got an x plus 1 already on this side. So I don't need one of those. But what I do need is an x plus 4. That's what I'm missing. Okay, likewise here now, if I look what's missing on the right hand side, I've got an x plus 4, I've got an x plus 1, but I'm missing another x plus 1. Now, if I did that, that would be incorrect. Hopefully you'll remember, if I'm going to make an equivalent fraction, whatever you multiply the bottom by, we must also multiply the top by. So bottom by x plus 4, top by x plus 4. Likewise, on the right hand side, the bottom by x plus 1, the top by x plus 1. Now the bottoms are the same, we can simply add the tops. So let's expand the brackets as we do this. 1 times x is x, 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 1 is 2. All over because the bottom denominator or the denominator is exactly the same x plus 1, x plus 1, x plus 4. Just be careful if it is a subtraction question um, that can affect this thing here. I mean, some people might still like to do this. So, obviously, that was a minus question that might, that might, uh, you know, slow things up a little bit. Um, but in this case, it's all pluses. So x plus 2x is 3x. So it's just grouping like terms. 4 plus 2 is 6. All over x plus 1, x plus 1, x plus 4. Now, I mean, in theory, you could simplify it again and factorize the top part if you wanted to and put 3 outside of x plus 2. And then x plus 1 x plus 1, x plus 4. Because sometimes what you might find, because now you've got them all into timesings, you might be able to cross top and bottoms off. In this case, you can't. So to be honest, either those two um, versions would be great. Okay, look, some different types of versions of, of questions you can do. You can see now where all the PNS methods coming in and your factorizing quadratic trinomials is coming in. Remember your, your form, and I'll just put this as a bit of a reminder. Uh, number one, always um, look for a common factor. Okay, always look for a common factor first. Number two, look for a difference of two squared numbers and then number three look for your P and S method okay um, 
always look in that form and you uh, or in that sort of way you you should be fine okay look i hope that's sort of made a little bit of sense i know that is a tricky bit of it and again it's like practice it's like playing basketball you got to shoot hoops and shoot hoops to get better at shooting hoops just likewise you got to do questions do questions in order to get better at doing questions and this sort of stuff it can take a little while guys i know the most important thing is set your working out have lots of nice working out there um, particularly for your pns methods um, if you're finding that challenging um, but more working the better for this type of question all right, any questions, guys, please post, please ask me. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed.